cosmetics. Feel the power of real cold-pressed argonauts. Pharmaceuticals. Specially developed to help soothe and relax your baby. Cleaning products. Removes tough stains like tomato sauce. Many of them contain ingredients originally derived from nature. And why not? I mean, there's a lot we can learn from the environment. It's not that simple. Over the last decades, companies and institutions have claimed natural compounds and substances as their own and hijacked the knowledge of how to use them. They have profited something to the tune of billions of dollars. Who's paying the price? Welcome to the world of biopiracy. Holy man the gun! Now, if you think of the word piracy, this is probably where you'll end up. But biopiracy hasn't always been as obvious as that. To talk about biopiracy, we first have to take a step back in history. It's been happening for centuries. That's Daniel Robinson, scientist and author of the book Confronting Biopiracy. While pirates were pillaging ships sailing across the high seas, European nations, Spain, Great Britain, Germany, and other global empires were practicing a form of piracy of their own. This sort of idea started with the spice trade from the early colonial powers um, going around the world and colonizing um, other countries and regions and um, appropriating um, their, their resources. Coffee, sugar, cocoa. Luxury goods of the time were simply taken and traded from colonies in Africa, Asia and Latin America. Many colonies were relinquished by the mid 20th century, but it did not bring an end to companies of rich nations taking advantage of biological resources like tamarind, hoodia and maca and indigenous knowledge in the global south. In fact, the commercialization of biological materials for medicines, cosmetics and agriculture, well, it's a booming business. The pharmaceutical industry alone is worth an estimated $1.42 trillion. Many drugs available on the market contain ingredients derived from nature. Bioprospecting is defined in a United Nations document as the exploration of plant and animal species for the utilization of their genetic resources. It basically describes companies and institutions looking for new natural substances to use in their products. And in recent decades, it's, it's pharmaceutical companies, it's biotech companies, um, big agricultural companies chem or chemical companies as well. Um, that are, that are um, claiming intellectual property rights relating to a lot of the research and development that they've been doing. And they're doing that through patents. The idea is that new inventions cost companies time and money in research. To help them make that back, patents give them exclusive rights over their innovation for a set period of time. Let's give you some examples. The design for the electric light bulb was first protected by a patent in 1880. Who doesn't love Velcro? Well, it was first patented in Switzerland in 1954. Even the slide to unlock action on older Apple smartphones is protected by a patent. It's important that we should have a patent system also, where uh, the industries are appreciated for their research. That's Sivana Pandey, associate partner at India-based law firm RNA Technology and IP Attorneys. But it becomes more problematic when traditional knowledge of communities is involved. Take the neem tree. Known as the tree of life in India, it has vast medicinal and healing properties, and it can also be used to make organic pesticides and fungicides. In 1995, US multinational W.R. Grace was granted a European patent for neem oil used as part of its organic fungicide Neemix, a brand worth over $60 million per year, according to a 2008 report. Indigenous communities in India had already been using neem oil as a fungicide for centuries, but others profited from their knowledge. The appropriation and commercialization of genetic resources like plant extracts and indigenous knowledge for profit, this is where bioprospecting can turn into biopiracy. Companies use patents to protect innovations without fair compensation for the communities where the genetic material and knowledge comes from. There should be a balance between 
the advancement in technology and also what is our traditional knowledge it should be preserved it should not be misappropriated it took 10 years for the european patent on the use of the neem compound to be overturned but this is far from a typical outcome for indigenous communities they often lack the funds and support to fight patents and there are other problems too it can also be harmful to biodiversity Hudia gordonai is a plant found in South Africa. It's like a cactus essentially. It doesn't look appetizing, which is pretty fitting because Hudia is a natural appetite suppressant. The sand people of the region used the plant to keep them going while hunting, but its properties made it very attractive for business research. South Africa's Council for Scientific and Industrial Research (CSIR) used the plant extract to formulate the molecule P57 as a hunger suppressant for treating obesity in the 1990s. The center patented the molecule and licensed it to multinational pharma company Pfizer and then UK-based biotech Phytopharm. No credit was given to the sand people and there was so much interest and hype um about this um the patents and the research it was in newspapers it was reported globally um that it was um decimated by opportunists so people came out and sort of decided they were going to to make money off off um the removal of this plant and the sale of this plant Hudia has had to be protected in South Africa and Namibia illegal harvesting is one of the main threats against the plant It took until the early 2000s for the sand people to become aware of the CSIR patent. With help from NGOs, the community successfully campaigned for the role of their traditional knowledge to be acknowledged. Under a benefit sharing agreement, they were to receive milestone and royalty payments. It's not clear how many cases of biopiracy there have been. The United Nations has tried to instigate a solution under its Convention on Biological Diversity. The aim of the Nagoya Protocol is to share benefits from bioprospecting with indigenous communities. There's a growing recognition in general that the whole issue of nature and biodiversity is important and it's important because consumers are more and more interested and in more aware and asking questions. That's Rick Kutchloyanga, executive director of the Union on Ethical Biotrade. It's a membership-based organization that helps companies comply with the protocol and awards them with a certification on their product if they do. But specifics on requirements are set by the country where the biological material is collected. This can be tricky. Some countries have no requirements. Others require permits for research or formulation. A lot of these regulations are still new, are still in the development, are sometimes unclear. There are research institutions and companies trying to comply with the rules, but some still circumvent regulations. Sometimes this is due to na- naivety, but sometimes it's it's with researchers willing to take the risk. Still on land, there is a framework, one that extends around 200 nautical miles from a nation's border into the ocean. beyond as a new frontier for exploration and potential exploitation areas beyond national jurisdiction cover around 2/3 of the ocean so it's the majority that's robert blaziak a researcher specializing in issues surrounding marine genetic resources there there is no uh, regulation on accessing the genetic resources and there's no obligation to share any benefits from the use of those genetic resources The high seas offer an abundance of possibilities. Revenue from seabed mining alone could be worth billions of dollars. You can see our video on the secret race to buy the ocean floor to find out more about that. Marine organisms can live in extreme pressure, temperatures, darkness. Animals like sponges produce chemicals that have the potential to treat cancer. The global market projected for marine biotechnology by 2025 is 6.4 billion dollars with the potential for use in pharmaceuticals, chemical and biofuel industries. Nations are currently trying to figure out how to share the ocean's resources equitably. 
Countries in the Global South don't want to be left behind. According to a study conducted by Blasiak in 2018, of a database holding almost 13,000 patented genetic sequences from 862 marine animals, actors from just 10 countries had registered 98% of the patents, and 47% of the patents were registered by just one company, German chemical giant BASF. These are people who should be in the room. They're able to explain why these resources are of interest, why they're useful for developing these new things that benefit humanity. And yes, they keep this company ticking. I mean, it is, it is um, economics as well. But I, I think the question is more of, well, why aren't more companies involved? Why aren't more countries represented? Biodiscovery, bioprospecting, however you want to call it, to make scientific and technological advancements well, it's clear that we need it. It has very, very significantly contributed to kind of human human well-being. Um, if you look at all kinds of medicines, they are based on natural remedies. They are based on bioprospecting. So bioprospecting is perfect, is, is important, will remain very important in the future. But it has to be done in a way that is fair to the biodiversity-rich nations where these solutions are found. One way is by creating guidelines on what can be patented and how. Another has been pioneered in India, where biopiracy once ran rampant, the traditional knowledge digital library. Whenever any invention is uh, filed for the patent, the patent office will search whether this particular property or this particular plant was already known or not known. Companies and research institutions should work with indigenous and local researchers, developers and marketers. Working together gives both local communities and companies alike the opportunity to profit. It also ensures the protection of the species, providing us with the means to make advancements in technology, health, food security and beyond. If you found this topic interesting and you want to learn more, please subscribe. We release a new video every Friday.